Hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insider C8. We deliver the news about the creation of our project Edwards. Uh, Takugawa-san, please, um, may you start uh, today's session? Yes, certainly. Uh, thank you, Oksana. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Hiro Tokugawa speaking. Uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about the real Koban and Zeni in uh, Tokugawa, Japan. Now, uh, you see, now I think I've mentioned already that when Ieyasu decided to put his uh, uh, places capital in Edo, uh, present day Tokyo, uh, it was a quite, it took, it, it required a tremendous leap of faith as uh, Japanese history had always been centered around Kyoto and Osaka, uh, facing the, uh, the Mediterranean, the Seto Naikai, the Inland Sea. Uh, and so how artificial the attempt was, uh, you can, you can see that in the fact that the, uh, well, most of Japan used silver as its currency, whereas in Eastern Japan, uh, where the population was much smaller compared to the West, uh, the, 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 uh, the main currency was gold. And then for uh, ordinary people uh, making small scale uh, everyday transactions, it was the uh, copper coins. That is the zeni. And koban refers to uh, the uh, smaller denomination gold coin. It's still pretty big. And then they have the oban, uh, which is like a te worth 10 koban, uh, judo. But uh, this was rarely used. I think this was used as gifts between amongst the uh, daimyo class. Oh, and just to make this, uh, so, so in fact, Japan had two sub-economies, one centered around Osaka, uh, which used silver, and then Eastern Japan was gold. And then what the Bakufu, the uh, shogun's government did was to ask the Mitsui, uh, which is the, uh, uh, well, which is the origin of the uh, Mitsui financial group today, the Mitsui group today in Japan, and they're still there. And they're still in business. And, but they started as one selling kimono in the city of Edo, and uh, and then purchasing the, the the kimono and all the silk in Kyoto and Osaka, and then uh, exchanging the gold golden current gold based currency in Edo and the uh, silver based currency in Osaka. Well, that's how they got into the business of finance. They were exchangers. They were in the business of currency exchange. And uh, so this is well mentioned, often mentioned. Uh, but what I want to stress here is that the uh, shoguns try to put two very different economies into one for the sake of maintaining peace. Only if the two economies are organically connected, then will the population move to uh, the uh, unpopulated Kanto plains. And then uh, what's more important about coinage in Japan is that the fifth shogun, Tokugawa Tsunayoshi, who is uh, remembered today mostly for being incredibly nice to dogs and cats. Uh, now, that policy uh, was probably uh, de decided uh, by Ieyasu like uh, 60, 70 years before Tsunayoshi had assumed office. So if people are nice to animals, then they'll be, they will be, by extension, nice to people too. So that is the final stage of the pacification of the Japanese population. But the other more important decision taken by Tsunayoshi was the decision to debase the currency. Until then, Japan was a major uh, producer of gold and silver. But uh, by the time Tsunayoshi took office in the 1680s, uh, so the gold mines and the silver mines in Japan had lost productivity. But we were running out of metal, but we were importing in large scale. Uh, so the decision taken, you see, if this were in the Toyotomi times, uh, we would have simply attacked China to take by force uh, what we wanted to import. But they instead decided to debase the currency. And the uh, main samurai in charge of this operation uh, explained to the shogun that if people believe in its value, then even pottery would work as money. And so uh, and that was that. But as a result, I believe Tsunayoshi was assass assassinated in the end because uh, people will have to spend the uh, well money with high gold value, and then what comes back to them later on will be money with less gold value. 
So it worked as a major taxation operation as well. So for this, Elias, she was hated. And until quite recently, his reputation was very, very, well, bad to say. I mean, people even referred to him as the dog show for his love of uh, animals. Okay. So, uh, and, but in fact, he was the man who debased the currency for the sake of peace. And as um, a material for comparison, uh, at roughly the same time uh, in Britain, there's John Locke. And uh, this name should appear uh, more often later on. But John Locke is uh, often known as, mostly known as the author of uh, two treatise, treatises on civil government. But he was also the first in Britain to claim that money is gold, period. And in order to uh, keep the supply of gold uh, sufficient within Britain, uh, the British would turn into pirates and they would steal from all over the world. Uh, please remember that uh, the Opium War was fought because Britain wanted to correct its balance of payments vis-a-vis -vis China with the use of force. And Japan, by contrast, uh, with the Shogun Tsunayoshi's decision to debase the currency, uh, that then we could keep trading with the Chinese without resorting to force. So the two countries, Britain and Japan, uh, reached the, uh, the decisions on the same issue, which were mirror images of each other, at roughly the same time. And after that, Japan became a very peaceful nation. And in the end, we became self-sufficient self in all the merchandise, whereas Britain had to keep expanding all over the world. It's not that they were very happy to do so, but by accepting Locke's uh, declaration that money is gold and gold is money, they had to keep taking gold from all over the world. And that's how they had become so warlike uh, in the years to follow. So I think that is some food for thought there. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, it's very informative as usual. Thank you. And also next, uh, Mr. Gen, uh, the CTO of the project, may I uh, ask you to speak as well? Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to update something to you. Uh, last week, uh, we received concept sheets from Mr. Tokugawa, which is super contentful. And then I started to study a lot of cases in you know, historical part and gaming application part and cryptocurrency part. And then I started to read again, uh, kind of uh, famous famous books in Japan, you know, uh, with the, with regard to Edo City, like uh, some books written by uh, Shiba Ryotaro. And then I was I'm super excited to see because now I see Mr. Tokugawa here, and then I read this book in you know describing a lot of works uh, done by you know Mr. Tokugawa Yehiro. It was anyway exciting. And then I'm really thrilled, thrilled to, uh, you know, realize Edo City in Metaverse as well. And then one thing um, I'd like to focus on is I'm really willing to design a quite new cryptocurrency design because as Mr. Togawa mentioned, I, I think cryptocurrency is totally different from the kind of uh, central bank system, which is, uh, you know, no one knows the rule. I mean, how, how you know, how many bills are going to be issued? And then what's the fundamental value of that bills and then currency and so on. But we are planning to provide kind of uh, interesting gaming application and then NFT transaction. And then we will find some good strategic partner, which is gonna you know, do their own business in end of us, which means maybe we can create a lot of ecosystem and then uh, all of the token is based on, is you know paired with uh, those ecosystems. So I, I think, um, the currency we are going to issue is a quite decentralized one, and then a uh, so-called DAO one. DAO means uh, decentralized anonymous organizations one. But one thing we can respect is Edo is a quite peaceful time, and then we have Mr. Tokugawa, a great shogun, and then you know which is super diversified. I mean, we believe the central kind of mentality and spirits but all of the cryptocurrency is going to be diversified. And then all of the cryptocurrency is based on the, some fundamental value, which is created by all of our users and all of our holders. And then uh, I'm really honored to have one of uh, my loving, uh, great tokenized guy who, who did you know, great works last week, but I, I cannot mention it in detail, but 
uh, yeah, I was anyway excited to hear that story and then how he how how much contribution he did anyway. And then he's gonna creating quite new world based on cryptocurrency. I'm really looking forward to showing it to all of you. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Ken. And uh, the next, uh, TS, the Chief uh, Token Engineer. Uh, could you please speak? Yeah, thank you, Oksana. And I'm happy to be here. So let me update some points for uh, the tokenomics and Forex system. Uh, currently, the tokenomics of uh, Kovan and Zeni have, have almost done. And now uh, I'm going to prepare the documentation as well as white paper. <laughs> and for the next, uh, to, uh, to encourage the full ecosystem, uh, we are going to uh, build a Discord and Telegram community. <laughs> And also going to uh, hold the uh, some something like the organization role campaign to uh, to reward to the early contributors. Uh, this this will strengthen the whole Edo ecosystem, and early contributors have, have will have a lot of benefits by joining the the early stage of our uh, Edoverse ecosystem. So um, I would like to uh, announce the details uh, details soon so please stay tuned to our updates and in addition to OG Row campaign uh, we are going to hold several events in the community for example like quiz events or like twitter event meme event and so on now i'm uh, now i'm preparing the details of the uh, campaign to uh, to encourage the encourage the uh, Ecosystem and uh, gross gross the committees by uh, making a, by making a, like a fascinating uh, events within the community. So uh, what we what we, I would like to say is that uh, the adverse is with the community by the community for the community. Thank you, Oksana. Over. Thank you again. Uh, oh my God, TS. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward for the events, especially meme events. Uh, also, uh, the next, uh, Dominique, uh, may I give you a word? Yeah, thank you. That TS uh, comment is very, very exciting, amazing. Yeah, we're really looking for the early contributor program and and uh, different kind of events. Probably, I think is forthcoming. It, it's going to be very soon, and um, it's. Uh, for us, actually, yeah, as a, as a, as a co-founders, um, of course, you know, we, we like to join that as a, the many programs just for forthcoming, uh, the token, tokenomics, uh, uh, launch. I think that, uh, will be launched in, in July. So in this case, uh, we have a uh, April, May, June, that we have a lot of events and then uh, we can join us. That, that's, that, that's that's going to be very fascinating, actually. Yeah, and then uh, we uh, now last week uh, we officially uh, announced that uh, 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 we became a member of a uh, association. Yeah, that is called a Metaverse Promotion Council. Yeah, uh, that was actually made for the uh, 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 just made for the promotion of the metaverse in Japan in the Japanese market, and th uh, that is uh, now for the many uh, uh, metaverse projects is just popping up in, in the Japanese market also global markets. But what others there, there's no rules, there's no uh, sort of uh, some real uh, sort of uh, concrete. Um, uh, projects uh, coming up just in this, in this market yet. So uh, the, uh, they have to uh, some code. They needed some coordinations, and then we became members, and then um, uh, uh, and then that we we're gonna just uh, try to cooperate with other uh, other members. And I heard the members just uh, uh, in, uh, uh, just. A lot of sort of major Japanese companies just join the join the associations, so um, we might do something uh, just with them in, in the futures. That is Japanese entity uh, called uh, Edobus uh, Co uh, Company Limited. 
Um, that was actually officially uh, incorporated, I think, one month ago uh, in March. Um, and then uh, we just uh, tried to just co- uh, just now preparing for the contract with the contractors uh, to build the uh, to design the, con- uh, the ecosystem. So uh, when we just do this uh, uh, contract uh, to promote to uh, to actually materialize our, our token system, uh, we we might just need uh, the finance uh, in Japan. You. Because you know, we thought that you now we might just you know, raising a fund just from the ecosystem and the futures, but at the same time uh, we might just need some of the sort of real financing here in Japan. That and you know, we have to just utilize a company, uh, some um, uh, uh, company structures, the financial structures, just using that in the Shima groups. So uh, we we do something in the futures, and then uh, 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 we might just uh, announce something very very soon. Um, then uh, we are now uh, preparing for the white paper, um, and then the people just really some engaged in this, and then they just all the sort of uh, members. Uh, 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 it's just you know uh, the probably I think the very soon that the joint together and then to uh, talk about the uh, most of details of our white papers. So um, uh, April, May, June is going to be very exciting quarters. And then uh, please just uh, wait for a uh, lot of coming up, a lot of info- events and um, I'll contribute a program for the, the tokens. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dominique. Uh, very intriguing as usual. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, also for listening and for speaking. Uh, I wish you a nice week and I will hear you next week. Goodbye.